it, it's been great. It's been great being here this morning and seeing some of the great sessions, the same ones that you're seeing. And I couldn't help, as I'm sitting in the chairs as well, wondering in any of our crafts in life, what's the greatest challenge that we're faced with? And when we go to meet those challenges, how are they best met? By a single individual exercising a single belief or a single vision? Or by a group of people coming together to solve problems? Now, before I get into that, I should probably explain how a jazz musician and a teacher got onto the subject of leadership so passionately. And when I reflect on it, I guess I've I've been involved in leadership my entire life. In fact, when I was a toddler, I think that's probably one of the biggest reasons why I got into so much uh, tension with my older sibling. Um, in fact, I don't think she called it leadership at that point in time, but I was, a, I was ahead of my time. And as I got older, I started to realize that there's a significant gap in so many of the resources uh, that, that talk about leadership. Matter of fact, a lot of these books can be found in a peculiar category online and in bookstores. It's called the self-help section. But I started to wonder, where's the group help section? As I started to look for new metaphors for leadership, suddenly my experience as a jazz musician and a teacher started to scream at me. And I started to see the working jazz quintet, like the group of students behind me, is actually the perfect metaphor for the type of leadership that our schools, our businesses, our communities, and I dare say our government desperately need. So I wanna talk about leadership this morning, obviously, but I'm not interested in the formal structures that may exist. What I'm actually interested in is the conditions, the habits, the habits of people as they come together and how those habits allow for synergistic initiative, synergistic leadership to take, to take the stage. And literally today, our metaphor becomes reality because we have a jazz group just waiting to play. So I'll go ahead and let them do the music and then I'll come back and, and we'll talk about the habits that we see.
I, I would call that a success, wouldn't you? Yeah. yeah. So if we do, who won? Who gets the credit? Who is the leader? I mean, before these guys get all cocky, I should probably point out that, that I, I am the teacher, right? <laughs> I mean, I taught them, right? Except, if I'm really honest, I did absolutely nothing. I didn't call the tune. I didn't direct the solos. I didn't even count it off. Heck, I wasn't even nice enough to offer them transportation this morning. <laughs> I did bring the drummer's stick bag, though. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you know, and, and I'll, I'll say this. Ben clearly looks the part of the conventional leader, right? He's playing the melodic voice in this group. He soloed the longest. But in reality, Ben is being supported by an all-star cast of musicians behind him. Musicians that are supporting his every note. Musicians that are actually chiming in on his ideas and giving him new material to work with. Suddenly, Ben almost looks the part of the follower. There are habits, there are ways that these musicians interact that I want to dissect a little bit, and we can learn a lot as we look at those habits. So here's the first one. Every musician on stage is simultaneously creating and taking space. They're creating space for others, but they're taking space for themselves. Now, our soloists did not play the entire time. Matter of fact, they left gaps in their playing for the other musicians to chime in. And you see that interaction between the soloist and the piano, the soloist and the drums. And this is really, really important because it almost serves as musical feedback, a way for the, our musicians to tell each other when they're onto a good idea, maybe a way to redirect them, or maybe a way to just simply supply new material for the soloist to work with. So let's see that in action a little bit here. Let's check out our soloist and let's see the interaction between the piano and the interaction between the drums. Yeah, you notice uh, that this is profound leadership that's taking place on this stage. Okay, we need, we need people like Jake in our lives. We even need people like Abe in our lives. Because what they do is they actually confirm our ideas as people. They confirm those things. And when we look at our businesses, when we look at our organization, we need those, those people around us to help the whole thing move forward. The second thing that this group does is they embrace mistakes. Now, I'm not necessarily saying that anything that the group did was, was wrong when they played. Okay, I'm not defining a mistake that way. I'm defining a mistake as just something that came up that they hadn't planned for, they hadn't expected. And notice that I didn't use the word accept or simply tolerate. What I actually said is embrace. These students are actually looking for things that are going to come up in their musical performance that they hadn't expected. That's what jazz is, and that's what makes this exciting for them as players. How are you running your organization? Are mistakes stigmatized? Or are we looking at those unplanned events as new opportunities, ways that we can expand our reach, potential that we hadn't thought about before, rather than simply disregarding it altogether? Let's do something fun. We're going to improvise on the TED stage here. Uh, Abe is going to give this group a, a curveball, and let's see how they react um, and just simply embrace the idea that Abe's going to throw out there. Good luck. <laughs> As soon as, as soon as these musicians heard that Abe, instead of doing a swing groove, uh, he was going to do a Latin groove, they completely changed their, their demeanor altogether. Okay, now imagine, imagine if for a second our bass player decided that she liked the swing thing better, and Maddie was going to keep playing swing even though Abe kind of played off Latin. Or same thing with Emmerich in our guitar. It actually would have destroyed the momentum of this, of this group, and there would have been a musical negotiation on stage, and they would not have been successful. 
But instead, all of the musicians just simply said, I will go with that. And it makes for great music and something that, that we hadn't planned for, which is awesome. This is not unlike improvisational comedy. In fact, those improvised comic troops have one main rule. In any of the scenarios that they are improvising, every actor must be completely accepting of that. Otherwise, in real time, it just destroys the momentum. Here's the third thing. These musicians are guided by a vision. The same way whatever business or organization that you happen to work for probably has a vision statement and a mission statement and a value statement. These guys are directed by vision as well, but the vision actually comes from the music. The tune that they played, all provav, is pretty common for jazz musicians. And in fact, the chords that it uses are even more common. It's the 12-bar blues. Every single musician behind me has done copious amounts of listening to the blues. But what's unique about it is that they all listen differently. They all listen to different things. So as their perspective is informed by their own personal tastes, the vision of the blues allows for every single one of those perspectives to intermingle, which makes every jazz group that forms completely and totally unique. So what's the vision like in your organizations? What's your mission statement? Does your mission statement allow for people with a diverse experience, perspectives, to come in, work within that vision, and actually expand it? Or does it limit people? These musicians are not limited at all by the vision that the blues gives. And in fact, as they bring in their own personal experiences, it just simply expands the performance the more players they play with. We can learn a ton about leadership by how these musicians interact. And in fact, we can view their performance as a version of active leadership. The outdated model is that of a ladder, where people attempt to climb it and those that reach the top are proclaimed our leaders simply because they can see further than the people beneath them. That doesn't work. It doesn't work in our, in our modern society because our world is far too chaos, chaotic. Our problems are far too complex. And the solutions that we need need to be more diverse than one person simply standing on the top of a ladder. If we want the best for our kids, if we want the best for our communities, we need to find ways that we can bring in as many different ideas as possible and work with as many different leaders as possible. We need to lead like the students here on stage. We need to lead, simply put, like jazz musicians. Thank you. <laughs>